Hey everyone, today I'll be going over how to set up OBS Studio on your laptop and also provide the best settings you could possibly use while recording or streaming. Although this guide is primarily for laptop users with multiple GPUs, you could still follow the same steps and procedures on a desktop as well. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Starting off, if you have not done so already, go ahead and download OBS Studio from obsproject.com. Following the download, complete the setup wizard to install OBS on your computer. Once you have finished installing and opened OBS, this window should appear. Before moving any further, if you would like to skip to any section in this guide, then please refer to the timestamps located in the video description. To start, the first thing we must do is select the main source. Right click anywhere in the sources box and in the menu select add and select the source type you wish to record or stream. To capture your entire monitor, simply select display capture in the menu and after naming it to your choosing, your monitor or monitors in my case should show up in the drop down and preview box automatically. In OBS, you are also able to capture specific applications by selecting the game capture option in the sources selection. Here, you can decide to capture any full screen application, capture a specific application, or capture the front window using a specific key. For this tutorial, I will use the capture specific window option. Another drop down will appear asking you to select what window you would like to capture. Select the desired application. The other settings down below are mostly self explanatory and can be left on their defaults. The final main source option you can use is the video capture device. Here, you can choose a camera, capture card, or other USB devices to capture. In this instance, I will simply select the capture card. For the other settings below, you'll want to select custom under the resolution or FPS type dropdown. Under resolution, select the capture resolution at which you want to record at. I will select 1080p for this capture card. Under FPS, simply select the amount of frames per second you want your video capture device to be captured in. I will set this to the maximum which is 60. The video format and other settings below can be left at their defaults. Once you have selected the main source that you want to use, you can then add secondary sources such as an image overlay. To add an image overlay, simply add an image source, name it whatever you'd like, and select the image or overlay that you would like to use. Now that all of our sources have been selected, we can now set our encoding settings. Select the settings button and head over to the video tab first. Here, we will decide what the base resolution and frame rate will be for the recording or stream and whether or not we would like to downscale the selected base resolution using the scaled resolution option. It is ideal to have your base resolution and frame rate to be the same as your selected main source resolution and frame rate. For instance, if I want to record a game console from a capture card that is set to 1080p 60fps, then the base resolution must be 1920 by 1080 and the common FPS value must be set to 60. If you would then like to downscale the captured sources from, let's say, 1080p to 720p, then you could simply change the output resolution to 1280 by 720 and that will give you a 720p video resolution output on your recording or stream. We are done here so now we can move on to the output tab. First, I will go over the settings that are most ideal for streaming and afterwards for recordings. So to start, we must first set our output mode selection to advanced so that more options are available to us. In the encoder drop down, you should have two or more options available to you. Those being software encoding or X264 and hardware encoders such as VCE for AMD video card users, QuickSync for Intel card users, and NVENC for NVIDIA card users. For streaming, if possible, it is suggested to use X264 as the encoder due to its higher video quality when compared to hardware encoders at the same settings. However, since an overwhelming number of processors today still aren't capable of recording or streaming at high resolutions and frame rate in real time, many are forced to choose the hardware encoding alternative. Since this computer I'm using consists of Intel chipsets, I will choose the QuickSync encoder. I suggest that you, as a laptop user with Intel chipsets alike, also use QuickSync because, let's be honest, we don't use Intel's iGPU for any game or anything else, so using QuickSync will basically have zero impact on your CPU or dedicated GPU. Although the best settings I'm about to show you are for QuickSync, you can still use these settings for other hardware encoders and get similar quality results. The target usage can be set to slow. 
Looking at the profile just below, we would like to set this to high. Below that is the keyframe interval which should be set to 2 as this is what various streaming services recommend. The rate control must be selected as CBR for streaming because many streaming services will not work well with other algorithms. Since some streaming platforms also have streaming bitrate limitations, it is suggested to select no more than 5000 kilobits per second for streaming. Since this, obviously, is a very low bitrate for 1080p 60fps, I suggest you rescale the output to 720p since 5000 kilobits per second is better suited for 720p 60fps streaming. Under that, set your latency to normal and set your B frames to zero. As for subjective video enhancements, this option is preference based and all it does is sharpens the output video. Moving on to the best recording settings, we will once again use QuickSync Encoder and MKV video format. Just like for streaming, the target usage should be on slow and the profile selected on high. The keyframe interval can remain on too. Now for the rate control, it is suggested to use the LAICQ algorithm as opposed to CBR as it is very quick and very high quality. The LAICQ quality should be set to 24 for optimal quality. The latency and B frames, once again, should be on normal and zero. We are now done with our encoding settings and we'll move on to the last section which is the stream setup. In the stream tab, select your streaming service in the drop down and then, if applicable, select the server. For YouTube, select the primary server. Then you will have to enter your stream key which will be provided on your streaming page. But be sure not to reveal this key to anyone as anyone with your stream key can stream to your account or channel. In this section, I will go over some troubleshooting tips that could help you solve the most common problems with OBS. If you get a black screen in the preview box when selecting the game or display capture source, then that means OBS is not running on the GPU that your monitor or game is running on. Nearly every gaming laptop or other high specification laptop will typically have an integrated GPU as well as a dedicated GPU. Since laptop hardware is designed to operate on batteries, your monitor by default will run on your iGPU to save power and any game you are trying to capture will likely use your dedicated GPU. To overcome this issue, all you have to do is go to Settings, System, Display, then scroll all the way to the bottom and select Graphics Settings. Under Graphics Performance Preference, select the Browse button and find the main OBS executable file in your Program Files folder. After selecting it, hit Add and OBS will be added to the list. Select it and select Options. If you intend to record or stream your desktop, then you will need to select the Power Saving option in the list. If you intend to record or stream a game utilizing your dedicated graphics card, then select the High Performance option. Click save then restart OBS. As you can see, after changing the settings, the preview showed up immediately. If the LAICQ option is not available to you when setting up the recording encoder settings shown before, then that means your CPU does not support the algorithm and so you will have to use the next best and most common alternative, CBR. For best quality, set the CBR bitrate to 30,000 kilobits per second. If your output recording appears to stutter a lot, then that means that the hardware or software encoder is being overloaded and you will either need to drop the resolution or frame rate in the video tab in OBS settings. And with all of that being said, that's it. If this video was helpful, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to join the Goose Flock to never miss a new upload. I'll catch you all later.